Good afternoon, everyone. Are you guys excited for the last session of the day? <laughs> All right. Uh, my name is Akshay Cannon, and I'm a PM on the project. And I'm Yuri Dolgov. I'm a software engineer on the project. And uh, today we're going to be talking to you about Google Cloud Print and the future of printing. Um, so real quick, just to give you an outline of the presentation, we're going to start with an introduction, uh, explain what Google Cloud Print is. Uh, we'll talk about how you can integrate with our application, both to print from as well as to receive print jobs. Uh, we'll talk about some of the formats we support. And uh, finally, we'll talk about our future plans and uh, where we are heading going forward. Uh, so real quick, just to get a show of hands, how many of you guys in the audience have heard of Google Cloud Print prior to Google I.O.? Awesome. Pretty much everyone. Cool. And uh, how many of you guys have ever printed something using Google Cloud Print before coming here? Awesome. Most of you guys. And uh, how many of you have, have ever used our API before? All right, a significantly smaller number of you. Uh, so hopefully this talk will change that and uh, will give you a better idea of our API as well as uh, the platform as a whole. So uh, let's kick things off. So at a, at a very high level, uh, Google Cloud Print was a web service that we at Google created to take the pain out of printing. Uh, we know that setting up a printer and printing to a printer are, are some of the most troublesome things that people have to deal with every day with computing. And uh, we really wanted to make that experience better. So uh, our high-level goal with Cloud Print was to provide a seamless driverless printing experience that worked regardless of what platform you were on. Uh, pretty much as long as your device can connect to the cloud, you should be able to print without running a, a full driver stack. <clears throat> so uh, in terms of our, our motivations and what drove this, uh, I'm going to take a trip back in time to 2010, uh, way back in the day, when we were designing Chrome OS and trying to figure out how to solve, a, solve printing on that platform. Uh, so it, it, printing is obviously a really, really important use case on the Chromebook. Uh, it's, it's, it's a device that's designed for content creation, and, and people need to print. And um, so we, we were considering different models for how to do this. Uh, on one hand, you have your, your traditional driver model, which you're accustomed to on your Windows, Mac, and Linux machine. Uh, th this was great because it was tried and true, but there were, there were a lot of trade-offs with this. Uh, one, one major problem we saw is that we'd have to package every single Chrome OS device that we sold with a whole bunch of printer, printer drivers that, that you may or may not even use. Uh, especially for an action you perform not too frequently, it doesn't make sense to have this code sitting on every single device that was out there. Uh, I think another problem we ran into with drivers is just the fact that we'd have to keep them continuously updated. If you got a new printer and it didn't have the drivers that you needed on that device, you'd, you'd be dependent on Google or on your printer manufacturer to, to release drivers that were specific to your model. And, and that was just a huge pain point. And we didn't want to have to deal with having this constant baggage on every Chromebook that we'd have to keep updated. And um, I, I think third of all, and, and most importantly, uh, Google has a lot of platforms that are important on the cloud. We have Chrome, we have Chrome OS, we have Android. And we didn't want to just come up with a solution for one platform. We wanted to come up with a solution that would scale to a whole bunch of platforms. And uh, that, that was the beauty with Cloud Print is because what we had was a web service, we, we were able to build something server side which supported all the different platforms that Google has. And um, this is a comic I like. It's an excerpt from uh, the Oatmeal, which sort of gives you an idea of uh, some of the pain points you run into with, with traditional driver installations. And, and this is exactly what we want to avoid with, uh, with Google Cloud Print. So uh, this cool 3D diagram gives you sort of a, a high-level overview of how our system works and um, what exactly it does. Uh, there are a variety of devices you can print from. Some examples just given here are your tablet, uh, your Chromebook, your Android phone, your iPhone, your, or even your traditional Mac or PC. Um, your print jobs are sent to Google Cloud Print. You can send them over any format. And then we convert them into the format that they need to be in for the destination printer. Uh, so here are three examples of, of devices that we could send print jobs to. And arrow A is pointing to a, a printer that is shared with Google Cloud Print through an intermediary laptop acting as a, as a connector. Um, we'll explain more of that, more of that later. Uh, arrow B is pointing to a cloud-ready printer. These are printers that talk directly to the Google Cloud Print service from within their firmware. Uh, we have one of these printers up front, and we'll actually be doing some live printing for you later. Uh, and then arrow C which is um, basically uh, you're printing to an enterprise server, which could be managing thousands of printers. And we actually use a server very much like this inside of Google to uh, manage all of our printers with employees. So um, the, the great thing with Google Cloud Print, and, and one of the reasons, I guess, the, the beauty of the platform and we why we find it so powerful is, is it allows you to do 
all kinds of things that you could, you could never really imagine doing before with, uh, with local printing. Uh, so for one thing, as an application developer, to add printing functionality with your app is as easy as three lines of code, and uh, Yuri's gonna be guiding you through that at a later portion of our presentation. But we've really made it really, really easy for you as developers to plug into the platform and integrate with, uh, with Google Cloud Print. Um, another advantage you have is because with Cloud Print, all of your print jobs go through the cloud, you can print not just to printers, but actually to any device or application which is connected to the cloud. And we've built a lot of really interesting products around this, which, which we'll be explaining more later in the presentation as well. Finally, and, and this feature is something we feel that is really powerful, is that we've made it, we've made it dirt simple to share printers with people. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys have ever tried to share a local printer with someone, uh, but, it, but it's not exactly a really fun process. You, you, you can either do it through, through network sharing and set up your computer as a server, or you can pass someone a USB cable, in which case they have to plug it in, go through a bunch of driver installs, and, and by the time they'll get printing, it, it will take forever. So um, we've, we've made sharing ridiculously easy, and I'm actually gonna show you a demo of that real quick. Uh, so, so the great thing with Cloud Print is, is we've made sharing a printer as easy as sharing a doc. So here you can see the, the Cloud Print management page in Google Chrome. This is just google.com slash Cloud Print. Um, you can see my, I have three printers. Uh, the printer that I have selected is actually the printer in the front of the room. This is our demo printer. And um, if I want to share this printer with Yuri, all I have to do is uh, click the green share button, and you see a sharing dialog just like the one in Docs. Uh, I type in Yuri's Gmail account. I hit enter, oh, not slash enter. And uh, I hit share, and that's it. I've just shared this printer with Yuri, and, and it was as easy as sharing a doc with him. So. Um, because your printers are associated with your Google account, it allows us to make sharing uh, really simple and seamless. And um, I guess as a fourth point also with Google Cloud Print, because all your print jobs go through the cloud, uh, we're completely OS, device, and browser agnostic. So your printing experience is gonna be virtually identical whether you're on your Android phone or whether you're on your, your Windows PC. Uh, you're going to see the same print options, see more or less the same dialogue, and, and we've, we've done this to pri provide a consistent experience regardless of what platform you're on. Uh, so I've given you a high-level overview of the platform. Now I'm going to hand it off to Yuri. He's going to explain how you can integrate with Cloud Print from within your apps. Hey, hey guys. I'm going to guide you through engineering part of our presentation. And I want to start with um, limitations of existing printing solutions of, on different, uh, different platforms. Uh, with web platform nowadays, you can pretty much build when, whatever application you can think of. But when it comes to such an easy thing, thing as printing, and still there are many people who care about getting their document printed, you might face with a whole bunch of different problems. Uh, pages look differently on different web browsers, so you have to worry about making them look the same on every single browser you basically create your application for. If you have mobile version of your web application, it's even worse because usually mobile version is different from desktop and you might wanna have a printed version look the same as on desktop. With mobile devices, it's even worse. Uh, for every single new platform you deploy your application to, you have to come up with different printing solution. And for some, of, for some platforms, you don't even have standard solution that you have to invent something on your own. And that, that's what we are trying to solve with Cloud Print. With Cloud Print, we want to provide you um, with um, <clears throat> the same seamless printing experience on every single platform. Same API, same uh, MIME types of the content type of the, of the documents, everything's the same on every single platform. Um, and I want to start you with example. And I want to start with example of uh, web integration. How you do it? Uh, how you integrate Cloud Print in your existing web application? Uh, for web, we have very simple yet very powerful way. It's uh, gadget-based. So basically, first thing you need to do is just load gadget um, code from this URL onto your page, and gadget class name is Cloud Print Gadget. It has only one static method, which is create default print button, which creates default print button, which is, looks like this. Um, <clears throat> and if you create instance of this gadget, you can also use uh, those methods listed before. First of them is set on close callback, which is pretty trivial, allows you to set on close callback. You can set any function that is going to be called when print dialog is closed. The next one is set print button, and here it is. 
And that one allows you to set whatever HTML element you want to attach print gadget to. You can use either button generated by this method or you can use your own uh, DOM element, doesn't matter. Whenever a user clicks on that DOM element, uh, print dialog is going to pop out. Uh, the next and the main method of this gadget is set print document, which allows you to set document that is going to be printed. Uh, first parameter of that is content type, uh, which is content type of the document you want to print. Second one is title uh, of the print job. That one is going to be used to identify the job by the user on uh, <clears throat> in print queue. Third one and the main is content of the document. And content can be both binary or base64 encoded. Though base64 encoded version is a little bit larger than binary version, you might still want to prefer that in some cases, especially if you have some kind of native to JavaScript uh, bridge and in this case, you might face with problems of early string terminations or stuff like that. So you might you might sacrifice the size and uh, well still use base64 encoded version of the document. And if you decide to use base64 encoded version of the document, you will need to set fourth parameter, which is opt, uh, op optional uh, content encoding. And in this case, you will need to pass base64 string. Uh, if you want to have more control on opening and closing print dialog, you might want to use two other two methods below. It's open print dialog and close print dialog, which allows you to open and close print dialog. <laughs> um, and you might want to use it if you want to open print dialog on some custom action, like print doc document was uploaded, or uh, I don't know, um, conversion was done, or registration finished, stuff like that. So any, any custom events. Um, I want to go and show you how you do it in, uh, in an existing application. This is just a fragment of code. Uh, let's say the content of the page is stripped. It's, it goes like here. So first thing you need to do is uh, load, load gadget code, as I said. Next thing, in this example, we use onPrint function, which is going to be called whenever a user wants to print a document. And first thing we do in this function is creating cloud print gadget instance. The next thing we set print document we want to print. In this case, we use application PDF uh, content type, but we can use many others, and Akshay will tell you more about that later. And we set print job title as like my print job title, something dummy. And uh, this is base64 encoded content of PDF. And since this is base64 encoded version, we need to set force parameter to base64. Oh, yeah, I forgot about it. Um, and then we just open print dialog, and that's it. We are done. And one more thing I want to uh, mention is that this code will work exactly the same way on any browser, uh, including mobile browsers. So you only implement it once, and, the, and well, we, are, we will do everything for you. We will open different type of dialogues on different browsers, depending, uh, well, optimizing layout for, for those. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and I want to show you how Box integrated with us. They, they implemented this integration recently, and it took almost no time to do that. I hope you know what Box is, right? It's uh, yeah, file sharing, file storing uh, service. I have my Box account op opened here, and I have only one document, um, and I want to print it with Cloud Print. So I select Send to Cloud to, to Google Cloud Print, and here I see print dialog, and as you can see, I have invitation to accept a new printer, that the printer that actually shared with me a few minutes ago. I'm gonna go ahead and accept this printer. Here we go, printer is accepted, and now I'm going to use it to print this document. You see that document was immediately sent to the printer, and it's going to be printed like in a few seconds. Um, so, it's super easy on web uh, to integrate web application with Cloud Print, and it's even easier to integrate Android application with Cloud Print. In order to do that, you, you will have to, you will need to include uh, Cloud Print intent uh, <coughs> code into your application, and you can get this code on this URL or just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, to make sorry to interrupt to make matters even more interesting, this printer is connected using a mobile network. So, um, yeah, everything seems to be connected. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, I will continue with Android integration. On Android, the integration is even simpler than on web. Um, all you need to do is just add cloud print intent into, into your application, and you can get the code of this intent on this URL. And the intent class name is cloud print dialog. And all you need to do is just instantiate this intent, set data and type of the document you want to print, set title of the document you want to print, and start the intent. Since it's so that simple, I want to go ahead and show you how to do it in real application. In my case, application is not that real. Uh, this is dummy web browser. Oh, yeah, thank you. So it's dummy web browser, and it has only three UI elements. Uh, URL box, which is basically edit box where you can type URL you want to go to. Go button, which you need to click in order to go to this URL. And web view, which is going, which is, uh, well, which contains content of the web page. So you can see code there. Uh, it's very simple. I don't want to go ahead and I don't want to spend too much time on that. The only non-trivial part here is that we have functionality to get HTML content of the web page. And in order to do that, we need to have JavaScript to Java bridge because, well, this is the only way you can access web view content. Anyways, I'm going to compile and start this application. Here we go. So this is, as I said, very simple browser. You can open the page, you can navigate, do stuff like that. Let's go ahead and integrate it with CloudPrint. All we need to do is, should, is to just add UI element. User will click in order to open print dialog. In this case, oops. In this case, it's button, and I have it already in my uh, layout. XML file, so I won't spend time implementing it right, right, once again. Um, and I have all the code implemented already. I will just uncomment it and go ahead and explain line by line what we have here. First thing we do is create a print intent. Then we find print button in the UI and set on click listener. So in on click listener, what we do is just get content of the web page, set it as document to be printed along with content type, which is in this case text HTML, uh, set title of the print job, and start the activity. That's pretty much it. Let's look how it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it should start in a second. Yeah, here we go. Connection is a bit slow, yeah. Here you see a new button print. We just go ahead and click this button. Did I? No? Um, this will open print dialog, and we'll just, we can select printer you wanna print to. Let's use the same printer again. Print. And it should be instantly sent to the printer. No? There we go. Okay. <laughs> Works this time again. <laughs> okay, it's going to be printed in a few seconds. Um, so I'm going to continue with, yeah, with my presentation. In some cases, <clears throat> those two integrations might not. Oh, by the way, yeah. You can get the code of this presentation from here. It's completely open. Can check how it looks in details. Um, so in some cases, this, those two integrations might not be enough for you. For example, you are working with some other platform or you wanna have some more flexibility, doesn't matter. We still have open APIs that you can use. And there are three main API calls that you need to know if you wanna submit job to CloudPrint. First one is search. It allows you to search for all the printers available for the user. You can do some, cast, some uh, filtering, some search, some like uh, filtering by query or filtering by status for those printers, but after all, this call is to provide user a list of printers available for, for them. Once user selected a printer they want to print to, you need to do another call, printer call, which will return capabilities of the printer. And you will need to show those capabilities to, to the user so that they could select how they want to print the job. Once capabilities are selected, you will need to do third one, third call, which is submit and the main one. 
Uh, that will submit a print job to printer with given printer ID, uh, title of the job, uh, selected capabilities, content type. Uh, if uh, con content of the job is base64 encoded, you will need to set content transfer encoding as well, and content itself. So it's super easy again. And with that, I'm going to head it back to actually. Sounds good. Um, so we've showed you how you can integrate with uh, Thank you. Uh, so, so we've showed you how we can in integrate with CloudPrint. You can use our, our web widget, our Android widget, our, our HTTP API directly. And uh, we've, we've really tried to make it as easy as possible to bring printing functionality in your, into your app. Uh, so that's printing from a lot of places, but we actually also support printing to a lot of places, or printing to anywhere. Uh, we have over 20 million printers that are registered with Google Cloud Print as of today, and that number is just continuing to grow. So uh, the, our main type of printers are, uh, at least for the best user experience, we recommend what we call cloud-ready printers. Uh, these, these are printers that connect directly to the web from within the firmware themselves. Uh, we have over 70 cloud-ready printer models that are available from a wide variety of retailers and manufacturers. And um, we've, in particular, printers, the, the list that we have here on our slide deck of HP, Canon, Kodak, Epson, Fuji Xerox, and, and Samsung are just the, the manufacturers who have printers that are currently available. Uh, we're working with a much larger list of manufacturers over time to, to expand this out. So basically, uh, it will be hard at some point to buy a printer that's not cloud-ready. Um, we also have a full, full list of printers on our website, uh, g.co slash cloudprint, uh, where you can check out what printers are available and uh, which ones are cloud ready. So uh, I know a lot of you also probably don't want to buy a new printer, just to use Google Cloud Print. And uh, the good news is that you don't have to. Uh, we support what's called the Chrome connector, which allows you to take any local printer that's connected to your computer running Chrome and use that computer as a print server. Uh, so how this works is, let's say you have Google Chrome running on your Windows PC at home. You could USB your printer into there, set it up as a local printer, and then from within Chrome settings, you can register, uh, in fact, here's a screenshot from the settings dialog. You just click the uh, Add Printers button right there, and it's simply a one-click process. Your local printers will automatically get added to your Google Cloud Print account with the account that you're logged in with. So, so we do make it easy to set up printers that, that aren't cloud-ready. Uh, the only caveat here is that you, you do need to keep your computer running uh, in order for jobs to be printed out. Um, that being said, if you submit a print job to a computer that's turned off, uh, it gets queued, so next time you turn it on, your job will get released and printed out from the printer that's connected to it. Also, we don't just support printing to printers, as I mentioned earlier, but we really support printing to anywhere. Um, you can print to, uh, currently, every Google Cloud Print dialog has the option to save to Google Drive which will take whatever you're printing, convert it to a PDF, and save it in your Google Drive account. Or you could even print to FedEx Office, which is a, a partnership we recently launched this year, which uh, allows you to, to print your document and get a retrieval code, which you can use to, to basically print out and pay for your job at any local FedEx Office location within the US. Uh, finally, an, another little exciting feature we have is the ability to print to your mobile phone. Uh, so if you have Chrome for Mobile installed on Android or iOS, and you're signed into Sync, what we do is we actually register your phone as a Google Cloud Print device in your dialog. So what you'll be able to do is from whenever you're printing from Cloud Print, if you're using the same account that you've set up your phone with, uh, you'll see your phone as a destination that you can print to. And what we do is we just push an Android push notification for that the job is available and it gets downloaded to your phone. Um, so, so this is already available today and you guys can try it out. Finally, uh, in terms of printing to anywhere, we also, like, like most of our product, have a fully open API that, that you can use as developers to, to receive print jobs. So we have a XMPP interface, which, which you can connect to in order to receive print job notifications. And uh, we also have a full set of HTTPS interfaces that you can connect to to basically uh, fetch the job, set job status, and I'll, I'll delve into the details on the next slide. Uh, Cloud-ready printers, such as the one you can see on stage, have already implemented this, this in firmware. So it's, it's really easy to implement whether you're working with low-level hardware or building an application. And um, yeah, really any application or device can implement this. And so um, we, we leave the possibilities of, of integration 
up to the developer, and, and a, a lot of this really allows you to use your imagination for what you can print to. So some examples we just thought of are you could print to your Kindle, uh, you could build an application that would allow you to print documents for reading on the go, uh, you could technically build an application which would even allow you to print to a smart web-connected TV, um, and uh, if, if monkeys were cloud-connected, cloud then you can even print to a, a monkey with a typewriter. That one might require more imagination than the others. Um, so um, uh, just to go into the details of our API, uh, there's two API calls you really care about with our job retrieval. Uh, there's our, our fetch API, which uh, takes in a printer ID as an argument. Uh, so you would call the fetch API when you receive an XMPP ping that a job's available. And um, what the fetch API does is it returns a JSON list of the jobs that are available to be printed. Uh, in, in this JSON object for each job, uh, we have two parameters that are important, the uh, file URL parameter and the ticket URL parameter. Uh, the file URL parameter, which is the one right here, is basically a URL that you can use to download the file. Uh, so th the cool thing about this URL is the, you, can, you can dynamically change the format of the file by specifying a different accept header when you're fetching this URL. So for example, if, if you want to fetch the job as a PDF, you set your accept header to be application PDF, and then uh, we, we will convert the document to a PDF server side and send it to your printer. Uh, if you want to fetch it, uh, the other main format we support is a PWG raster, which is a, a simple raster-based image format, and if you want to fetch that, you just set your accept header to PWG raster, and we'll, we'll stream the file to you in that format. And then finally, ticket URL is uh, basically uh, your print ticket that contains a list of the, the filled out options of exactly what, what the user specified. So for example, portrait or landscape or whatever other capabilities you've exposed from your printer that are configurable. Our, our second API, which is important, is our, our control API, which allows you to basically update the status of the job as you're printing it. Uh, so by default, whenever you print a job, we set the status of that job to be queued. Uh, and over time, as you're printing that, so for example, when you start the fetch, you can set the job, move the status from queued to be in progress, and then when you're done printing the job, you can move the status to done. Uh, and if something goes wrong, you can also set the status to be error and specify an error code and message string. Um, finally, um, we, we do take security and privacy really seriously with Google Cloud Print. Um, and um, w one example of how we do this is we have a secure data access model such that every, every item within our system, whether it's a printer, whether it's a print job, is ACLed, so that you can only print to that if you have explicit permissions uh, as your account to, to send a print job there. So um, all, all the APIs we mentioned earlier are authenticated, so you have to be logged in as a user who has explicit privileges to access that. So, so we earlier said you could print to anything, but, but that was a lie, because we have security restrictions in place. Uh, Finally, we also support, uh, so th this is uh, actually, I'll, I'll start with the problem here, is uh, when, when you're dealing with printer registrations, uh, registration is an API that's, that's difficult to make an authenticated call because it, it requires the printer to somehow authenticate as you before it can register itself with the system. And uh, th that's a hard problem because um, th the biggest concern for us is uh, it's a security issue because we could have printers when you're typing credentials into the printer that could store them locally unencrypted on the device, make it vulnerable to attackers who could steal your Google account from the printer. And, uh, and, and also, I, I think on another fold, there's also the UI problem of all, not all printers support text entry on their device. Uh, so we've solved this using what we call the anonymous registration flow. Uh, this allows a printer to basically make an unauthenticated registration call to our service, which anonymously registers the printer to Google Cloud Print. In order to actually uh, complete the registration process, we return a URL to the printer, which the printer can then print out and give to the user, and the user can visit that URL on their web browser and complete the registration process from there. Uh, we know that this is secure because you're only entering your cred credentials into a, into a Google login page and not, to, not into a third-party interface. Uh, and then finally, there's, al there's also robot accounts, which are special accounts that we create just for printers in our system when the registration happens. Uh, the nice thing with robot accounts is they're sandboxed, so they're only given restricted access to, uh, to Google Cloud Print and can't access other things in your Google account that you wouldn't want them to. Finally, all our interfaces use, H use HTTPS, and uh, we strongly encourage you as developers to also use uh, the HTTPS versions of our API. 
Finally, uh, regarding privacy, um, uh, another problem that we've dealt with is uh, spam invitations. Uh, so for example, um, if, if I shared, I could technically share 100 printers with Yuri and completely spam his account. And uh, another possible attack is I could share a printer which looks like one of Yuri's printers to him, and he could end up printing to that and I could steal all this data as a result. So one thing we've done to prevent this is we've implemented printer sharing invitations. So this, uh, as you saw earlier, uh, requires Yuri to explicitly accept my printer sharing invitation before he can print to a printer. And as part of that invite process, he sees exactly who I am and the name of the printer that I'm sharing with him. So this prevents you from getting spammed with printers and also prevents you from uh, printing to printers unless you're absolutely sure that you've accepted an invitation and you know who sent you that invite. And then uh, finally, regarding print job content retention, we delete print jobs as soon as the status is set to done. Uh, if the status is never set to done, then after 30 days, we, we delete print job content from our servers and uh, we don't store them long term. Finally, we've talked about how you can print from anywhere, how you can print to pretty much anywhere, and uh, I'm gonna go into another part of our presentation, which is how you can print anything. And um, we do support a, a very, you know, Google Cloud Print was, was developed with, with sort of developers in mind and client platforms in mind. And we realized that, that when you're generating documents client side, you don't wanna be bound to a particular format that you have to generate. You wanna have the flexibility to generate your content in whatever format you want and then send it server side where we can do the necessary conversion. Uh, so for this reason, our API accepts virtually any format as input for your print job. So you can send us PDFs, uh, standard image formats, uh, most standard document formats, Google Docs, uh, Microsoft Office documents, uh, HTML documents, or even URLs, which we can fetch server side and then print. Um, on our side, we make a best effort to convert this document into either PDF or PWG raster. And uh, if the, another thing that's interesting is um, if you don't care about conversion, then our platform, if the input and output formats are identical, will actually do no conversion whatsoever and simply pass the file to our system. Uh, this could be really useful if you wanted to do something like make a 3D cloud printer that used a special format. Uh, as long as the, the format in which you're submitting the job and receiving the job in are the same, uh, our system will just pass the job content right through. Uh, it's also particularly useful for sending, if you want to encrypt content before you send it to us and decrypt it after you receive it, uh, you could send us a custom encrypted format, which we would pass directly through without doing any conversion on whatsoever. And then uh, finally, um, one format that I wanted to focus on that I think is particularly powerful is HTML. Uh, it's, it's a format that's easy to create client side and uh, send to us on the server side. Uh, and the other great thing about HTML is there's no, uh, there's no direct page content that's here, or I guess page layout information. So it allows us server side to intelligently flow the HTML uh, depending on what media size of paper you're printing to. So for example, if you're in the US and you're printing to an eight and a half by 11 page, we'll, we'll flow the HTML text and images for an eight and a half by 11 paper and generate the appropriate PDF server side. Uh, if you're in some other country and you're using A4, then we would, we would flow the HTML content for an A4 PDF and send that to you. So as an application, you wouldn't even have to worry about uh, the, the media size of, of the destination printer that you're sending content to. Uh, so I'm, I'm now going to just spend a little bit of time talking about our future work and uh, where we're heading going forward with uh, Google Cloud Print. So uh, one, one huge challenge for us has been handling printer capabilities. Um, they're, they're, they can be kind of a nightmare to deal with. There's a lot, uh, basically with printer capabilities, um, the, the two main formats are uh, XPS and PPD. And um, the, the thing that makes them interesting is while there are standards, uh, printer manufacturers only r have to write capabilities such that they'll work with their particular driver. Uh, so for this reason, there can be a lot of ways to specify the same option. Even an option as simple as portrait or landscape uh, is specified differently on different platforms. So, um, so we really, uh, what we want to do is rather than just reading strings, we want to be able to intelligently understand these capabilities, make sense of them, produce uh, good options UI around them, and also even surface some, some of this functionality to, to developers so that as an application developer, you can know about the printer you're sending jobs to at a high level without having to parse these capabilities yourself. Uh, so that's, that's one of our big goals going forward, is, is to more intelligently understand these different capabilities and be able to semantically parse them on our side. Um, and real quick here, you can see uh, our, our server's JSON representation of a, or an excerpt from our server's JSON representation of an XPS capability, uh, just to see an idea of what that looks like. 
Another uh, big goal that we're working towards are uh, making uh, public and, and commercial printers you can print to ubiquitous. Uh, we, we really like the concept of being able to, to print even without owning a printer, regardless of where you are. Uh, one thing you may have uh, noticed is, so we did launch a partnership with FedEx Office, uh, as I mentioned earlier, which makes this possible. And uh, another thing, uh, if you guys are on the first floor of Moscone, we do have a cloud print station, which we've set up uh, to allow you to print to public printers. Uh, you can print to these printers simply by, by tapping an NFC tag or scanning a QR code. Uh, it, it, gives you instant, it instantly adds the printer to your Google account and allows you to start sending print jobs to it. And then uh, finally, uh, one of our, our biggest and most exciting goals mo moving forward is we want cloud print uh, to be tightly integrated with other Google properties. Uh, so you can com come to expect the same consistent printing experience regardless of what Google platform you're using. And uh, one, one feature that I'm about to give you a sneak preview of is uh, some of the work that we've been doing in Google Chrome to, to tightly integrate cloud print with the local printing experience in Chrome and just, just make that seamless. So uh, real quick, I'm going to grab the laptop and take, open up the, uh, so this is the Canary channel of Chrome. It's updated nightly. Uh, so this is pretty risky demonstration. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to try printing uh, our own API documentation using the new cloud print dialog that we're working on. So I'm just going to hit Command P. It's going to open the Chrome print dialog that you all know and love, uh, except there's a slight difference. And that is, I don't know if you guys can notice, the destination pane is slightly different from what you're used to. Uh, and by the way, this is all available on Dev Channel today, so you guys can check this out for yourselves. So uh, what's going to happen here is I'm going to click Change. And this pops up something different from the usual dropdown. It actually pops down a screen where your local printers and your cloud printers are integrated side by side. Uh, what's happened is because I'm signed into Chrome as cloudprint.user at gmail.com, I'm able to see my Google Cloud Print printers. So you can see from within the Chrome dialog, I can see save to Google Drive, I can see print to FedEx Office, and I can see the printer that's been shared with me, which is the Cloud Print demo printer, this guy up front. So what I'm going to do is, for the sake of this demo, I'm going to choose the Cloud Print demo printer. I'm going to hit Print. And what happens is uh, this document is posted to the Cloud Print service and then sent to the printer, which should be printing it out any second. Uh, so, so this is our integration in Chrome. Uh, and it's, it's, you know, we've tried to make it as seamless as possible, basically as easy to print a Cloud Print as it is to print to a local printer. And this is just one of the many integrations you'll see across Google properties going forward. Uh, so we're really excited for that. So um, actually, once this prints out, that concludes the end of our presentation. Um, thank you so much for coming. Uh, we're going to leave the uh, remaining 20 minutes for Q&A. Uh, so um, fire away. <laughs> there we go. All right. We'll start uh, with the right side of the room. Hi. The uh, I had one question. Uh, on the Android apps and on the web, is there a way to um, take away some of the options in the printing, especially uh, the number of copies that are printed? My app requires that the user be able to print something only once. So is there a way to suppress the number of copies that a user can print? So, so the question was whether it's, it's possible to, to restrict certain options within the, the Android dialog and within other dialogs uh, to, to not show options such as copies. Um, Actually, yeah. Uh, no, there is not such a way at the point, but uh, at the moment. But yeah, this is a nice suggestion. We'll discuss it. And, um, is there a way to actually suppress it using the HTTPS low-level calls? I mean, I don't. I'm yeah, yeah writing extra code. It, it, so if, if you create your own, your custom print dialog, you can suppress whatever you want. But in this case, you will have to parse capabilities yourself. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So, so you can do it using the HTTPS API and uh, basically not show certain options in your UI. Okay. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, you mentioned that you have millions of uh, cloud print printers on your system now. Can you speak a little bit about the infrastructure required for that? Are you do you have millions of TCP connections that are open or using you know, UDP or how does that work? So um, for for our cloud ready printers, uh, we're using XMPP uh, to handle the, the notifications uh, between us and those printers. Uh, there isn't necessarily a one to one correspondence of XMPP connections to printers because a lot of times with the Chrome connector. Uh, and with cloud print servers, you have multiple printers which can be associated with a single connection. Uh, so what it is is if for cloud-ready printers, we have one XMPP connection for each of those printers. 
And for printers that are connected to the server or through a Chrome connector, it's a XMPB connection per, uh, per machine. So uh, for example, if I'm sharing five printers with my MacBook, I'd have uh, five XMPB open, or sorry, one XMPB connection con controlling all five of those printers. But yeah, just short question, short answer to your question is we keep millions connect connections open on our side for every single printer, and we rely on GTOC infrastructure for that. So, yes. So if my office just lost its internet connection because a camel chewed on the wire, all I can do is stare at my cloud printers, <laughs> correct? Uh, so, so what happens is when your printers are offline, uh, any job that gets printed to them goes into a queued state. Uh, so everyone would still be able to print, but then once the internet comes back on, all the jobs would come back out of the printer. But I cannot send jobs directly to the printer. They have to go through Google. Uh, yeah, with Google Cloud. No print, connection they... to Google, no printing. Uh, yeah. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> Is there a Linux uh, print server for this or Windows print server short of leaving Chrome open on the server? Uh, there, there is actually. So on, um, on, on Linux, how it works is uh, you, can, you can start the Chrome connector, uh, but actually you can run Chrome in, um, this is actually, it's in the Chromium source. I'm not sure how much of this is, is documented. We, I, we should prom we'll probably be documenting it over time. But you can run Chrome in a headless mode with a certain command line flag, which will start the cloud print service up in the background. And uh, it's actually what we do internally at Google to get all our thousands of printers online. Uh, so it doesn't require you to keep Chrome running. It just requires you to have Chrome installed. And you launch it with the flag, which starts up the cloud print service in the background. I've noticed that um, sometimes the office printer that I cloud print to doesn't appear in the dialog box. Uh, I assume that's because it's kind of a flaky printer and sometimes it's offline or broken or something. But I didn't see in your API that there was a way for a printer to report its status or how does that, how does Google know that that printer is not available? So what we do is uh, for, for status, we actually determine that using uh, your XMPP status. So if, if the printer doesn't have an active connection, in fact, uh, you could see this if I turn the printer off right now, it'll show up as offline in the dialog. Uh, we, we basically use the XMPP status of the printer to determine whether it's online or offline. So, so that, that doesn't remove it from the list, though. Is there some? It what, doesn't remove it from the list. It from the what list? it does is it grays it out, and it, it moves it to the bottom of the list. Uh, so your, your online printers show up above your offline printers, but you'll still be able to see your offline printers at any time. If, if you're actually not seeing the printer, then it might be that you're logged in with a different account. Um, you, you have to be logged in with the same account that you used to set up the printer, or you could share the printer with your other account. Hmm. <laughs> but yeah, we, we don't, uh, the printer, if you set it up once, it'll always be part of your account, so. So you mentioned for security, once a, a job is complete, you delete it. Is there any ability to retain that for at least a short period so that you could reprint successful jobs? Um, so what, one thing you can do is if you're, if you're the printer receiving the jobs, uh, if you want to reprint successful jobs, we, on, we only delete the job content when the status gets set to done. So if, if you're the, the developer, you could just set the status to be in progress or from move it from in progress back into queued. And uh, with all these different states, uh, we would retain the job on our side. I guess what I'd like to see is, is that ability when you're using the connector. So you've got a, an existing printer and put that capability magically from your end. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, I, I didn't catch exactly that. Uh, so maybe just the ability to automatically keep a copy of everything you print in the drive. So not choosing one or the other, but archive. I right see, now. I see. Yeah, that, that would definitely be interesting looking into. I know there's, there's definitely document retention and, and privacy implications around that as well, because not everyone wants all their print jobs saved, but it's, it's definitely something worth looking into. Great. Thanks. I, I, lo I love Google Cloud Print, by the way, but um, my question's more like, um, say you're in Google Drive and you have a picture file. Um, I think if, if you print it now, it, like, it just comes out in a standard way. Are you guys like thinking of any options to, like if you wanted a full page photo or like half page or like, is there a way to format it? Uh, so, so currently your, your formatting options uh, are limited to what the printer surfaces and the capabilities. Mm -hmm. um, definitely over time we'll be expanding what those capabilities are. Uh, so things like scaling would be options that are, that are 
part of the dialogue. But I, I think for now, the, the best approach is to, to client side, just generate the, the PDF how you want it to look, or just flow the image how you want it to look, and then send it to our service. Um, but yeah, definitely, it's, it's future work for us, but uh, not currently there. Um, at, uh, on my home system, if I'm not logged in and I see my son is logged in on the computer, I can't print. Uh, is, uh, is there any work to have like a, an appliance that could just sit on the network, you know, a little, tiny little box uh, that would prevent or provide the cloud services so that I don't have to worry about being logged in? Um, we, it, there's, that's definitely a, something that a developer could technically build. Uh, we currently don't have uh, anything like that. Or we actually on. have. We, we have open source implementation for WRT support. And yeah. it just, it's on early stage. There is a guy who implemented this. And the problem he faced is basically a driver's problem. This implementation supports pretty much every HP printer, as far as I remember, and, uh, well, maybe something else. But it won't support, like, every single printer. And it's hard to implement one that will support every single printer. Yeah. Where would I find that? Uh, it's currently, we, we don't link to it from anywhere, but we can talk to you after the presentation. It's, uh, it's currently a project that's just on Google Code that was published by another Google engineer who built this as an enthusiastic side project. So, uh, <clears throat> so kind of back to the, the scaling. If, say, you have a printer that doesn't print 8.5 by 11, um, and you print an image or a PDF, uh, what happens? Does that get scaled down up to the media, or does it print at some you know fixed resolution conversion? Um, I believe uh, some of that depends on the printer you're printing to. If there's a fit to page option, then we'll we currently surface that and allow you to scale it down to whatever the output format is. Uh, otherwise, I think the default behavior is just to, to print it out exactly how it is. So it might not be perfectly aligned when you're trying to print an eight and a half by eleven PDF on your uh, on your A4 paper. Uh, that, that's the current behavior. Uh, I think going forward, we'll be working on expanding fit-to-page capabilities. But um, th that's why we were also mentioning that the ideal uh, experience, rather than scaling, is you want your document to be reflowed, which is why we do recommend HTML uh, for, for document submissions, because we can intelligently flow that for whatever printer it's uh, ending up on. No. But you don't, you don't necessarily have control over what that the source content is. Um, if you're, you want to print some third-party content that you're just browsing to, say? Uh, yeah, if it's, if it's, for example, a PDF you've uploaded that's 8.5 by 11 that you want to print to a, a A4 paper, then our best options there are, are fitting to page or just printing it out as it is. So we won't be able to intelligently reflow that in that case. OK, thanks. Uh, can you please uh, talk a bit more about the setup you had on the first floor? Uh, can I make m one of my printers public? Uh, so cu currently, w the setup we have on our first floor is actually just part of a pilot that we're running uh, to, to try and make printers public. So none of this UI is currently available. Uh, that being said, we, uh, at, depending on the, we're basically trying this out as a pilot to see how people interact with it. I think uh, moving forward, it might be something that, that we pursue more seriously and open up to, uh, to developers and to users. If my printer is not cloud ready, how do I print to it? Uh, so if your printer's not cloud ready, you can set up the, uh, the Chrome connector. Uh, so this is, or there, there's a slide earlier, or basically from within the, uh, if, if your printer's connected to a desktop or a laptop at home, uh, you can go to Chrome settings uh, and enable from advanced options Google Cloud Print Connector, which will take that printer and then share it with your Google account uh, using that, that local machine as a, as a print server. So the, the printer cannot be a, a network printer? Uh, it could be a network printer, as, as long as the, the only restriction is that the laptop that or computer that you're using as the cloud print connector has to be able to see that printer locally or over the network. It, ha it has to be part of the, the OS print dialog. Okay, thanks. If the page has a specific CSS layout for print media, will the uh, print, uh, cloud print? Yeah, yeah, we will use specific uh, printing layout for print. So, yes. And also, uh, does your HTTPS REST API, can I uh, set the uh, orientation program, uh, like 
orientation equals landscape or? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it depends uh, on the printer. If printer supports orientation, we will show orientation. If printer doesn't support orientation, we won't do anything. No, no, I mean, uh, uh, I guess certain oh. printers, uh, uh, for some reason, it has to do with drivers that does not uh, mm, allow, uh, expose the API for software to control uh, whether it always asks the user um, what orientation. But were you able to experiment that or you, uh, have you done it to programmatically set the orientation? Uh, so with, uh, with most printers, you are able to programmatically set the orientation using the capabilities. So basically, when you, get your, um, when you, when you fetch the capabilities for that printer, uh, you, can, you can find the ones which uh, correspond to orientation, set them in your print ticket, and then when you do your submit call, you can specify that print ticket with the uh, orientation specified. Okay, thanks. So you mentioned some esoteric encryption solutions where I would implement my own driver that has a shared key or something with my clients. If I need an end-to-end -end security where, where Google never sees my content, would I have to do that, or is there some other option? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, you can, yeah, with end-to-end with -end to -end security such that we never see your content, the, the best solution currently that we have is, is for you to encrypt it client-side and then decrypt it after receiving it. Uh, the disadvantage there is, is you lose the functionality for us yeah. to convert the document because we can't read it, but uh, it, it would be completely invisible to us in that case. Thanks. Hi. You said uh, raster data is either PWG raster or uh, PDF. Is there any plan to support XPS as a raster data? Uh, uh, so the question was, is there plans to support XPS as an output format? Uh, the answer is currently no. Uh, PDF and PWG raster are, are the main formats. Uh, we're, we're always looking into new formats to explore, but um, uh, for the foreseeable future, uh, PDF and PWG raster are, are our primary formats going forward. Is it because XPS is from Microsoft? That's <laughs> <laughs> not going to comment on that. <laughs> hey, so kudos uh, on uh, CloudPrint. It's a very useful facility. Uh, we have a, a network, a guest network that we let people connect in on, and we have our printers on our private network. Um, so CloudPrint helps with that, being able to not have them on the same network. Um, but one of the issues is, is being able to print from Word or other OS level type printers. Um, there's an open source piece of software that lets you do that, but apparently with that piece of software it only lets you print one copy at a time. Is there going to be anything supported by Google that would allow you know, printing from OS be first class, um, first class printing, like from Mac OS or? We, we or yeah, Windows. we currently don't have any plans to announce in that direction, but that's definitely something that, uh, that uh, we're looking into going forward. Um, and um, currently, I guess the, the one way to get around the fact that that isn't currently there is to, to save it as a PDF and then print it through Cloud Print in Chrome. But um, yeah, there's, we, we currently don't have stuff to announce, but uh, it, it makes the, uh, the wife acceptance factor pretty low when you have to go through and do those kind of gyrations. Absolutely. The, the second thing is, is um, someone had mentioned about a device like, um, one of the things I had toyed around with was using Raspberry Pi and putting um, Google Cloud Print on something like that. Is anyone at Google or on your team interested in doing something like that, or would they support uh, developers that were interested in doing a project like that? Because that seems like that'd be a, an ideal solution to provide printers, especially if you have a large investment in legacy printers that you don't want to replace with Google Cloud printers. Does yeah, like um, absolutely. As, as I mentioned, we, we did have an engineer who put together a reference imp implementation of a cloud print server on a router, and that's all open source on Google code. Okay. Uh, so I can, I can hand you my contact information, or you can message the, the Google groups, and we'll be happy to point you to the code and also put you in touch with the guy who wrote it. So. Okay, cool. Thanks. Uh, on that side? I think he was before me. Oh, okay. All right. I have two questions. First question is, how do you handle updates to capabilities? For example, um, you know, you have a server that got upgraded to handle duplex printing, or that the toners are completely out, you can't print anymore. Is uh, that over XMPP? 
Uh, so actually, we have an up I didn't mention this API, but we do have an update API, which allows you to do exactly that. Uh, it's uh, basically an HTTPS call that the printer makes. You specify your new capabilities, what's changed since last time, and uh, we'll automatically update all of that server side. Okay, so that's over this REST API, you said? That's over HTTPS. Okay, and the second question is, um, I forgot. All right, I'll come back. Sure. Okay, so my questions are that when you have multiple printers, it gets quite hard to determine if they are uh, you have the three different uh, connectivity options, and it's very hard to determine which of them are connected in, uh, in which ways, it, or at least used to be. Uh, so um, what's your opinion on that? And in um, Windows environments, you, in, at least in Windows 7, you can get an image of the, of the printer, so you can see, oh, that's, the, that's one. Are there any developments in that uh, direction? Um, so I, I guess a, a couple different approaches we have are, um, we do in our dialog use iconography to distinguish different types of printers. Uh, we also have a rename functionality that, that users can use on their side to, to name the printer such that you can differentiate between different printers. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I'm forgetting that kind of helps along these lines, but um, we have a couple solutions in place. I know there's, there's also a description field uh, which is that, that you can specify as part of the printer, which will show up in the print dialog, which you can use to differentiate different printers. Um. Okay, thank you. Will it be possible to uh, group printers like uh, on departments or functionality wise? Mm -hmm. It could also be, um, say if you have a mobile device or it, it feels that, okay, you're in, you're in this city or in this office, then these are the available printers from the ones that you are uh, cl close nearby? Um, so, so currently the answer to that is no, but we do sort of have a solution in place, which is our search. Uh, our search uh, in our CloudPrint web dialog search is not only over printer names, but over capabilities and description fields. Uh, so one thing we do, for example, at Google is uh, every printer has a description field for the building that it's in. So all I have to do is type my building name into the search dialog and I'll see all the printers that are near me. Uh, another thing is we, we also do, I, I think you mentioned grouping by capabilities or, or what options a printer can do. We do search over those as well. So if you search for I only want to see color printers, you could type in color and just get a list of printers which can print to, uh, to color. Uh, okay, so, so you employees at Google, you have like thousands of printers in your dialogues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you search for, for nearby, okay. Exactly. But okay, you usually only use like a couple of, couple of them. And once you use printer, it becomes your recent printer and they will be on top, basically. So you only do need to do search uh, once or twice. And then just... Finish. Thank you. Um, when you submit print jobs, you have to be logged in in the browser or in Android. Is there any way that a server application might be able to submit print jobs? Um, the case I have... Or the, or the use case where we might be able to use this is uh, one of our clients runs a e-commerce site and they'd love to be able to use cloud print to print order notifications as they come in. You can definitely do that. You can create dummy accounts that you can share with uh, the printer with and then just using OAuth you can uh, authenticate server with that account in cloud print and always submit it as that account. Okay, so that's OAuth, is it? Yeah. Huh? OAuth. We, yeah, we support both OAuth and uh, client login for authentication. So you could use that server side to authenticate in our, into our API with a, with a dummy Google account and then use that to submit print jobs. Excellent, thank you. Sure. OK, uh, I'm wondering what kind of data does Google extract from my print jobs? Um, because of privacy, the leading after 30 days, but there must be some other reasons to so uh, data. If, if, the, uh, if the source and destination formats of your print job are the same, so let's say you're printing a PDF to a PDF, absolutely nothing. Uh, we just send the document over to the printer with no, uh, without any conversion on our side. Um, in terms of, um, so in terms of conversion, we, uh, we do use a conversion service to convert your document to the format it needs to be in. Uh, but yeah, as, as I mentioned before, the, the converted document will not persist on our server for more than 30 days. Uh, the only thing, I guess, that, that stays left over are, are standard HTTP logs. Uh, 
and also I guess the fact that within your account you'll see these you'll see your print job history. So Google has no um, content extraction kind of. No. When I print my uh, bank account statements, it's just not at all. Okay. We don't we don't use your print jobs to serve ads. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there any update? on uh, the Android as an official cloud print? Because as I recall, it was still something that was semi-unofficial. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, uh, um, we, we are working on integrating with uh, the Android properties of Google Apps going forward. Um, but as, as far as platform integration goes, we don't have anything to announce at the moment. Okay. And then secondly, I think this has been asked about three or four different ways at, at least. Um, but I'm not sure that I got it completely straight. In our office, for instance, uh, we have uh, a large group of people that come in and out, and um, we have legacy printers. And I didn't really want to leave the legacy printer uh, connected to a machine on my account, uh, <laughs> since I'm not there all the time, amongst other things. Uh, but also the machines themselves are generally public. So I ended up putting it on the administrator, one of the administrator's accounts and leaving it there but there doesn't seem to be any way to have that done without having a specific account, which you then can delegate out of. Is that, that's, I think, the summarization of everything that I've heard. In terms of accounts, are you referring to like uh, login accounts or, uh, or like uh, a They have to have login. a Gmail account okay. in order to be able to have a printer, in, in order to be able to attach it to a legacy printer, which they can then share. And there's no other way around mm -hmm. that that so I can figure. It just uh, in general, enterprise printing, I guess, would be the question. And how do you, how do you take an, a set of enterprise printers and let a, sp a specific set of people, or even make it public, which is kind of what you're doing downstairs? Mm -hmm. when, is that going to be available soon, or when's that going to be available? Uh, so I, I guess in terms of both questions, uh, with, with uh, having an account in order to register a printer, you, you do need a, a Google account in order to register your printer with CloudPrint. That being said, it doesn't have to be your Google account or someone else's. Uh, a lot of the enterprises that we work with, uh, I guess to answer your question, uh, use what they call a roll account, which is just a, a, a dedicated Google account that they set up for the express purpose of printing uh, that, that they, they can share access to, and uh, they'll use that to run the print server. Uh, so that way, no one has to use their their personal account to. Uh, do, you, do you is there a way to? So if you have a set of employees, is there a way to share the printer with them, or basically make it available in their preferences, so that they don't have to be accepting invitations for this? Absolutely. So uh, what uh, we're we're working on expanding more of that going forward. But what you can already currently do is share it with a group. So for example, let's say you have a, a Google group that encompasses everyone within your domain. Uh, you could, from within the share interface that we demoed earlier, just type in that, that group. And uh, all that needs to happen is the owner of that group can accept the invitation on behalf of people in the organization. OK, thanks. Hi. Um, I developed an application uh, that actually works like a printer server. And the, the printer is a thermal printer. And I control the printer by escape uh, command. So I open the uh, LPT board and send comment. Uh, how about in that case? Uh, so this, this is with a, a thermal printer that you connect to uh, over LPR? Or? Yes, but it's connected to my applications. So there is no drivers, there is no. I see. If, if there's no standard print drivers, uh, we won't be able to integrate that with cloud print. Uh, so currently, I'm, I'm assuming you want to set up the cloud print connector from within Chrome to share it with your cloud print account. Okay. Uh, in, in that case, we, we only take the local printers which are actually in your OS print dialog to share. Uh, so we won't be sharing it un unless, it's, uh, unless it uses the standard OS print mechanism to receive print jobs. OK, but there is a, a, um, a kind of, of uh, I make a connector to the, the Google server, the Google? OK. Yeah. All right, I remember the question now. Um, so you mentioned you can print to your mobile Nexus, right? Yeah. What does that mean? Is it like it's just PDF on the flash drive? Exactly. So what we do is we, we take the job, we convert it to a PDF, and then we push a notification to your device uh, that, and that starts a download of that PDF. Uh, so you don't even have to be running Chrome for Android. It runs as a background service so using Android Push. So uh, you could print anything to your phone, and it just shows up as a PDF on the device. 
question. Getting, getting back to the non-cloud ready printer, you said you simply do this from a PC or something like that. Is there some software you have to load onto the PC to get it to act as the server? I assume it's acting as a cloud ready server. Uh, so c currently uh, it works from within Google Chrome. Uh, you have to have Chrome installed on that PC. Chrome OS, you mean? Uh, no, just, just uh, the, Chrome the Google browser. Chrome browser. Yeah. Uh, so from within the settings on Google Chrome, you can configure uh, your local printers to be cloud ready. And there's no additional software apart from Google Chrome required. So, so then it acts as a cloud ready server. Exactly. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. One more. Um, can you tell us about the um, uh, cloud print integration with the Google Apps, like sharing to groups or uh, et cetera? Uh, yeah, so in, in terms of apps integration, we, we do support. Uh, is this for enterprise in particular? Or for, yeah. Yeah, for enterprise integration, uh, we, we have currently um, our consumer solution for most part is our enterprise solution. Uh, there are plans to move that, uh, move that into a more custom enterprise solution going forward. Um, but yeah, for now, the, the, the integration we offer at a basic level is, um, as we mentioned, you can, you can configure uh, Chrome to run as a headless server on Linux, and then uh, also with, uh, with group sharing, you can easily share printers with groups of people. Um, so if, that, uh, if you add a new user to a group, that if, let's say we have a group called printers, and we have um, five or 10 printers connected to that group, and um, you add a new user to that group, would he automatically have the, the printer when he yep. log on to his new account? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Excellent, thanks. Cool. Do we have one more? All right, last question. <laughs> you know, normally the driverless printing is a myth, used to be, but you guys, it's really done a good job that it's, it can be reality that's really, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, everyone. <laughs>